It's difficult to, to say exactly what the loss of sawfish in the natural ecosystem would be. One of the last refuges for sawfish is around the coast of Florida. The sawfish is a bit like a, a cross between a shark, a ray and a billfish, all into one animal. They use the saw up top here to go like this to stun prey. started talking with George Burgess about his special needs that they need for a research note, uh, I knew we had the perfect call for that being the Neptune. And it's only through knowledge and through science that we can really properly know how to regulate and how these things breed and how we're going to be able to maintain the natural health of the flats. Hiding beneath the surface of the wild waters of coastal Florida, there is a creature so rare it is more like a mythical beast than a symbol of conservation. Now three of the most powerful and iconic voices for marine preservation that hold sway over Florida's nearly three million registered fishermen are joining forces to give a voice to this nearly forgotten species. It is a collaboration that will improve scientists' understanding of the gin-clear waters of the saltwater flats that Florida fishermen love. Guy Harvey of the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation and Chris Peterson, president of Hells Bay Boatworks, donated a flat skiff to the University of Florida for the important field research being done there to save sawfish. Both these species uh, are in deep trouble here in the, uh, the Atlantic. The uh, small tooth sawfish is uh, officially listed as an endangered species in the U.S. The uh, large tooth will uh, soon become one as well. Dr. George Burgess is famously known as keeper of the international shark attack files, but his role as a scientist, leading researcher, and professor at the University of Florida covers much more than just reporting on shark bites. This is one of, uh, of dozens of, of similar rows of, uh, of fishes in the uh, Florida Museum of Natural History. Uh, we're one of the largest uh, collections of uh, fishes in North America. We have probably about two and a half million specimens of, of fishes in here. Uh, and we probably represent about 8,500 species of fishes uh, from around the world. Each of these jars represents a, a snapshot in time of, uh, of animals uh, at, at, uh, at, at, the, at the time and place that they were collected. Um, and they're, they're an archive of our natural history, uh, which will be with us forever. Studies like the tagging and tracking of sawfish are one of the many ongoing efforts at the museum and the Florida program for shark research. The National Sawfish Encounter Database, uh, which is housed here at the Florida Museum of Natural uh, History, is a, uh, a compendium of uh, documentations of uh, all known sawfish records. We're tagging adult and sub-adult uh, sawfishes to uh, get an idea of their movements. Uh, in, the, in our case, one of our biggest things that we needed here was a, uh, uh, an appropriate boat uh, to work in shallow water areas of the Keys and the Tortugas. Uh, in Florida Bay. If Dr. Burgess sounds like the police officer in the movie Jaws saying, you're gonna need a bigger boat, his research team is trying to safely handle sawfish that can reach 20 feet in length. It's an adventurous effort, and one of the donors to UF study of these imposing animals is Guy Harvey, a man who's been described as the Indiana Jones of the oceans. He is internationally respected for his Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, which spearheads important projects like the Save Our Gulf campaign. But Harvey's work is best known through his art, which is popularly worn on t-shirts by millions of anglers. Getting close and personal to the sawfish is not easy, partially because of the very shallow wood habitat they inhabit. Um, they're very large animals, they're flattened to, um, to conform with a shallow water environment. And they have this incredible extension of the upper jaw 
that is uh, lined with these large teeth that it uses an, as an offensive weapon to feed. Uh, there's nothing else like it in the marine ecosystem. They're very few and far between, and they've become more and more scarce in the last few years. And there's more reason now to research, uh, do more research work about them to find out how many are left, uh, what they do, how they fill their niche, and uh, more importantly, to conserve them. Inshore, the flats, the mangroves, that whole area, that whole ecosystem is really the nursery for all of the seas. Florida is a very special place. Uh, Florida is unique because we have more coastline than anywhere else in the United States. It's critically important to me to make sure that uh, that, that we're, you know, very con conservation-minded because uh, I want to make sure it's there for my kid. My passion for fishing came from, you know, my very beginnings. Ever since I can remember, I was taking small boats out into the flats and into the back wild areas of Florida. I love the flats. I love to fish. I love watery places. I love... Uh, investigating all sorts of back little creeks and tidal pools. If there are fish are there or not, uh, it's always good to go and explore. You never really know what you're going to find out on the flats. A day on the flats is always uh, something that uh, is just magical. Uh, any scientist will tell you that uh, each and every organism, whether it's a charismatic one like a sawfish or uh, a pain in the butt like a um, salt marsh mosquito, has its place. In science, nothing is, is comes free. And uh, to do field work, uh, to be able to do the, the kinds of things that we need to do to get the uh, answers to the questions we're, we're asking in regards to uh, endangered species like sawfishes or or sharks and rays, which are also uh, foci of our, our research interests, uh, it, takes, it, it takes resources. And uh, our existing boat uh, was in uh, uh, over the hill, shall we say, and, and it was time for a new and better boat. I'm sure the, uh, the Hell's Bay guys uh, may cringe a little bit when they hear me say uh, work boat because uh, they make sort of the, the, uh, the Rolls Royces of flats boats for sport fishing. Hell's Bay Boat Works was created as a fishing tool. They're quiet, they're stealthy. We hand make every boat. Uh, a lot of the technology that we use comes out of the aerospace industry. We hand lay all of our fiberglass, which is somewhat unique in today's manufacturing processes. When we first started talking with George Burgess about his special needs that they need for a research boat, uh, I knew we had the perfect haul for that. They needed a platform that was maybe a little more stable than, and can carry more equipment and more people. Being a custom boat maker, we put a very small console in it. They didn't need a lot of seating. They need more room to be able to work around these large fish, uh, these sharks, these sawfish. Some of these sawfish are going to be as, as big as the boat itself. Um, but they need to be able to get into the shallow water areas, um, which this boat will do. A scientific work boat is, is what you want, but it has to have the, um, the ability to go into these very, very shallow water places. So you've got to have a small draft, um, engines that um, tilt up, and if you do get stuck, you can get off easily. And the Hell's Bay is the perfect ride for that kind of work. Uh, right now, we've got the, uh, the prettiest uh, uh, boat in the flats. Uh, not only is it a beautiful boat uh, and a very functional one, uh, but of course it bears the, uh, the wonderful artwork of uh, Guy Harvey. Nobody will uh, uh, confuse us with anybody else. Being able to work with the University of Florida in the Shark Research Program was a real natural fit for us. I went to the University of Florida. I had three children attend the University of Florida. We, we bleed orange and blue. This was a way to give back. It's, it speaks to what our passion is after we leave Gainesville after game day. It's really kind of the way the Gator Nation works.